remember that time in 2020 and even 2021 when buyers were buying properties without seeing them because they physically couldn't get to the property to actually see it in person? That is actually still happening today. So I think post pandemic, I guess you can say that now, this is how people are going to buy homes going forward. Now, I'm not saying all people are going to buy homes like that. It's definitely not the case, but I think this is becoming a new normal when it definitely wasn't normal before the pandemic to buy homes in this way. It was almost like unheard of. The only people who were really doing that were like real estate investors who do this for a profession. But when people were buying a residence for themselves, they just never did it. But now people do it without even thinking twice about it. So what can you do when selling your home to appeal to these type of buyers? So the first thing is gonna be having a floor plan of your property. Kind of like I said in the beginning of this video, floor plans weren't actually as common before the pandemic for all types of homes. Floor plans are always common for condos, for like apartment buildings where floor plan is very, very key, but they weren't as common for single family homes. Now you're almost seeing them in every listing that comes on the market. And it kind of does make sense because sometimes when you're looking at real estate pictures, it's hard to tell exactly where a room is. Are you looking at a basement? Are you looking at a living room? Are you looking at a primary bedroom on the first floor or the second floor, depending on the actual property? There are so many questions that buyers can have. Love floor plans as a real estate agent because they solve these questions. We don't get these questions as a real estate agent anymore because you just give them the floor plan and it makes it easier for everyone. So I highly suggest getting floor plan for every single property that is being sold because they're useful for everybody. I don't even care if it's a studio apartment that is 500 square feet. You need a floor plan. It's just so, so, so helpful. The next thing is going to be the ability to do virtual showings. What does that mean? That means your agent should be ready to go at all times with doing literally a live video tour with another agent, with a buyer, where they are willing to do a tour just like they're going to do in person, but they're doing it virtually. So on my team, we personally do virtual showings for clients literally all over the world. It's kind of crazy to think about it. It's actually really cool because literally a client could be sitting in Japan and we might be doing a tour for them. So it's kind of cool to think about. And you also might be thinking, okay, Lauren, but wouldn't any agent be willing and ready to do that? You would think, but sometimes there are agents who they don't really know how to work the technology or the agent might not know how to do a virtual tour that makes the property seem just as enticing as it would in person. There are certain different ways to angle the camera, different shots to get, different ways to walk the buyer through the property just as if they were seeing it in person to make it seem appealing to them. It's really, really easy to make a virtual tour awkward, weird, and also just not show off the property in good lighting because the actual video and the camera is all off and not centered and it just makes the property look bad. During the pandemic, real estate agents were actually practicing ways on how to do these virtual tours that made the properties look good. And this is the skill that I'm so happy we learned during this time because we're still utilizing it today. And the last thing, of course, is going to be video. Now, I cannot even tell you how many times that I'm doing a real estate showing and the buyer coming through the door has seen our video marketing somewhere and they actually came to the property from the video. I remember the first time I heard this, which actually was probably a little bit before the pandemic because I was doing video marketing before that, but way less video marketing than I'm doing now. The first time I heard that, I remember being so surprised that that was the one sole reason that that person came through the door was video. I was like, really? You didn't see anything else? You saw the video first and then looked at the property online? I thought it was so bizarre. And that had to be about 2018, maybe 2019 that I was hearing that. Now I hear that all the time. And I guess I'm not surprised anymore, but it's crazy to think about how many buyers are actually finding the property from the video. So this is something that needs to be done for every single listing, 100%. I don't care if your home needs a lot of work or is in pristine condition, does not matter. It still needs a video of some type. Now, I would say that any video is better than no video, but I think in today's day and age, you can get even a little bit more creative, think outside of the box, but almost be like funny or show personality in the videos as well. That really is going to entice people even more to watch it if there's some type of human element in the video. So I hope this helped you figure out how to market your home post pandemic, because I think that there's so many ways to market a home that people just aren't taking advantage of. And so many agents today are still leaving opportunities on the line by not being able to show off properties in this way still to this day. I think there are so many agents that are actually leaving so much potential on the line by not being able to market properties in this way. So I would love to know, would you ever buy a property site unseen? As always, I just love hearing from you guys in the comments.